for the longest time, I've wanted a Porsche Cayenne. In fact, I have this tendency to just instantly like anything that isn't really liked. And I remember back in the day when this thing was revealed, it was hated in so many different ways, not just its looks, but also the way it drove and everything that it stood for being a Porsche that was now an SUV. But because of that and so many other reasons, I've just always wanted one of these things. And finally, <laughs> I now have one, a Porsche Cayenne. I have to be honest with you at the start of this video though and say that I've actually completely lied to you all. I've said many times before on other content that I don't like silver cars. I definitely don't want a silver Cayenne. I don't like black interiors. I think window tint is a sin. I've always wanted the big turbo engine and you should definitely avoid the V6. And especially something I've always hated is those horrible aftermarket hedge units that replace the original and just look shocking. <laughs> but the funny thing is, this KN is all of those things. I've completely lost the plot, gone against my grain and just bought it because I fell in love with the thing. So truth be told, I've been looking at Porsche Cayennes daily for the past two months. I had alerts on eBay and Auto Trader to let me know when any new cars came up within a certain budget and certain refinements. And the thing was, there weren't really that many cars that interested me. I certainly would have discarded a lot of silver ones like this, but often lots of the 957 generation and facelift cars came up for sale within my sort of parameters. And I really wanted a, an earlier 955 car. And then my friend Christian at Heel and Toe Cars posted this one on his Essential Autos Instagram account and it just immediately caught my eye. Firstly, it was priced quite low and I just thought, you know what, I'd quite like to buy a car from someone that I know, especially something like this, because I've had advice from people to avoid KNs. I sent a text to my friend James, or as you might know him, JM on Cars, asking him if he still had his KN and how he was getting on with it and maybe if he wanted to sell it. To which he said, he sold it, but buy with caution, with an exclamation mark. I then said, I'm looking at the early pre-facelift models and I don't suppose the potential repairs won't be anything I'm not used to. To which James replied, don't do it. So as you can see, I've taken the utmost seriousness to his advice and ended up with one. So needless to say then, I took the trip up to Essex the next day to go and see this car, had a little drive with Christian and I just bought it immediately because I loved the thing. I absolutely love the four exhausts at the back. I can't quite work out if these were a factory option, but they look and also sound pretty good too. And if you haven't worked out from the very start of the video, this is actually the V6 KN. And <laughs> as you can see, it has a black interior. Basically all of the things that I'd previously said I wasn't interested in. So this is the V6. It's the 3.2 litre block, which is also in the R32 Golf and the Audi TT and things like that from the time. I think all slightly different variants. Produces around 250 horsepower. And we'll talk about it a little bit more, but actually it's not as underpowered as I was expecting. It's pleasantly surprised me. Whereas when I drove a, a 4.5 KNS, I was almost underwhelmed. So um, I think it's quite a nice looking engine too. That sits in there all tucked away and this bonnet's actually a little bit there we go then the front end i love the lights on these things obviously it's not a turbo so it has the smaller grille car is in silver as you can see but i have to say it really suits the kn and silver in general suits porsches doesn't it right you can see that the mirror cap on that side is slightly different to the one on that side not sure what's happened there but i'd imagine someone's done a replacement and that was the best that they could find it is on 20 inch wheels which again actually i forgot it off my list but that is another thing that i'm kind of anti i always want to go for the smallest wheels i think they look less gangster and a little bit more quaint let's say but again i have to admit i think these look absolutely fantastic on the kn and it is a big car so actually 20 inch wheels don't look particularly huge We've got relatively new Falcon tires on the rear and Michelin's on the front, which for now are doing a great job. In terms of the condition of the car, well, on this side, it's uh, a pretty sorry affair in some places. We've got scratches all up and down here and along here. It looks like someone set Jack Russell sort of on the side of the car and just let them go ham. And they follow all the way over the bonnet and on the wing here. I don't know how well you can see that, but obviously with it being a silver car, they're not that noticeable. And needless to say, cosmetically, yeah. I don't really get too upset by cosmetic things. I'm much more interested in how things drive and how they feel. And this does feel wonderful. Now these suffer from 
boot struts like most cars of this era and these generally are just about holding but it's on its last legs as you can see and on a windy day and on a bit of an incline like we are here it can't quite hold but it's just about hanging in there but the good thing with KN is you have this which is the ability to open up just that glass hatch and I really really like that feature so much looking really tidy inside huge boot which I'm using already and uh, it was very nicely cleaned by Christian obviously had a dog the last owners um, but it's presenting so so well you'd be really surprised to think this thing was 18 years old we do have rear tinted windows which again is not something I'd necessarily go for but you know it suits the car and the condition of the interior in the back is absolutely remarkable absolutely remarkable really really looks like it's never been sat in I know what a cliche but it's true really really lovely leather as well no frills particularly in the back here this thing doesn't have any heated seats not in the front or rear but we do have cup holders that's nice and I love the way Christian cleans the carpets with those stripes looks very very good got some lights for your rear passengers but that is about it and so if we jump into the front obviously this is an automatic a tiptronic so we have the buttons on the wheel to shift up and down no manual gearbox here also no air suspension there would normally be another lever like that one here if you had the air suspension option this doesn't have that but it does have the diff lock and the low range gearbox as all early 955s did no automatic light and no frills in general the good things though is that these kns are pretty well kitted out anyway i said we don't have heated seats in here but the first owner did spec some very useful things like cruise control something i probably couldn't live without in my daily driver we've got heated mirrors which is a really nice thing to have obviously electric windows all around we've got these big five porsche dials in front of me which i love so much any porsche is instantly recognizable by its instrument cluster this car also has the bose sound system which was not standard and also not that common really outside of turbos they didn't seem to really spec them with that and the thing that i think is absolute sacrilege and should never happen we've got an aftermarket head unit and you'd probably fall over in your chair if i told you and admitted that actually this is one of the reasons that i decided to buy the car but i'll show you why so we've got the key here which on these looks a little bit like the kn and when you hit the unlock or lock button, you can see the light it lights up at the front there. Nice little touch. Switch it all on. Got those instrument cluster, which we love so much. Everything seems to be working on here, which is really nice too. Lights up with Porsche on here. And as you're about to see, the reason that this system is so good, and I've slightly changed my opinion on these aftermarket stereos, is because this one has, as soon as it wakes up, working Apple CarPlay. And I couldn't actually believe my eyes when I saw this come into life because it works just like any brand new car. And it's been integrated so, so well to the point where I genuinely think it works even better than a new car because it's so responsive. Everything's as you would find it anywhere else. And because we have that Bose sound system, it sounds so, so good. So I'm absolutely chuffed and over moon with that. I don't think I'd ever have a car that I bought for such little money with Apple CarPlay, so I'm dead made up with that. I'm really, really happy, and I apologise to how rude I've been to people that have aftermarket head units before, because this one is a good one. This being a basic model, we don't have dual zone climate control. We've just got a temperature control on one side and air for both sides here. No fancy dual stuff, no heated seats, which would normally be here, as I mentioned. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. But in terms of condition, this thing is in really, really good nick. I'm so, so happy with it. And um, yeah, just cannot believe I finally got a KN. So in the KN then, and I have to say, I absolutely adore this thing. I've practically not stopped driving it since I bought it. It just feels so cool to drive, a bit like it does in an old L322 Range Rover. You do just feel quite important and quite imporious over everyone on the road. 
in one of these things, but the KN does it in a different way because it's still a Porsche and it still does feel like a Porsche, but just a big one at that. With the weather we're having today, it's just a reminder of exactly why I wanted one of these things because it's just that drizzly, cold, slippery sort of conditions that you just want to be in a big car for. You feel safer and the KN makes you feel safe. As you can see when we're just cruising along like this, the 3.2 V6 engine in this car sounds super nice, but I just want to show you around 3000 RPM. If I go into second gear, if you just listen to this, it's got this fantastic growl to it, which is deep enough to almost be mistaken for a V8. But I love how you've got this little rev band that reminds you you are in fact in a Porsche because you could be easily mistaken for thinking you're driving something much more sedate and boring than what you are. So it sounds super lovely, but when you just wanna cruise along, it is very, very civilized. One thing that has taken me back immediately with this car, and I guess I'm not surprised, but I am a little bit surprised, is the fuel consumption or lack of fuel. Actually, it's not a lack of fuel consumption. It's very much the opposite. It eats fuel, this car. And you might not be surprised by that. And I'm not really either, but just to quite the extent, I wasn't expecting it. In fact, since I've picked this car up, I reset the consumption figure thing on, on the, the screen here. And it's, it's in the teens. I think it's around 19.6 in the two or 300 miles I've done in this thing since I picked it up. In fairness, that's been a lot of in-town driving, but on a motorway run, I can't really see it getting anywhere near or above 25 mpg. So even with this being the V6, it's supposed to be slightly more economical than the V8, but it's still a real, real guzzler, this thing. Luckily, with this being a 2005 car, the tax is only 395 pounds. If you get one any later than that, it's 695 or something crazy like that. And interestingly, in my last video, I talked about how ridiculously expensive my XC90 is to insure. It's something like two grand for the year. It's absolutely ridiculous. This, do you want to take any guesses how much this costs to insure? Nope, you're wrong. It's a third of the Volvo at just under 750 quid for the year. Everything's exactly the same. That's declaring business mileage, the car's stored in the same place. My wife, Katie, is insured on both cars exactly like for like, except this is just three times cheaper to insure, which go figure. So let me just put my foot down then because I was worried that a V6 would feel slow. 30, 40, 50. Yeah, okay, look, it's not the fastest car in the world and the V8 is definitely faster. But with that V8, it almost with the 340 horsepower headline figure. I, I was expecting it to be quick, but it really didn't feel quick at all. Whereas this, I was expecting to be stupendously sluggish, but it's not that either. This V6 has an incredibly sharp throttle response and almost too sharp, I might say, when you're just trying to pull away gently, it is very, very keen to get going. And it is a very sharp throttle pedal, which is quite tricky to get used to but pair that with the the noise and the ride height it does pick up nicely and gives you the impression that you are accelerating pretty well until you look at the speedo and realize you're not but to be honest for the most part it's not a problem for what i use this car for rolling around town bit of motorway driving it's never really an issue the only place i've ever thought ah yeah i've got the v6 is up one of those steep inclines at around 40 miles per hour let's say where you're probably cruising along in fourth or fifth gear. You'd like to just maintain that gear, but the car feels it has to shift down in order to maintain 40. Apart from that though, and like I say, 90% of the time, I'm not really ever wanting for more. I'm very, very happy with the V6 in this car. I have to say, I've been absolutely loving the Apple CarPlay in this thing. Yes, I do get to drive around in press cars fairly frequently, and they generally all benefit from Apple CarPlay but never in one of my own cars have I had Apple CarPlay, and I didn't think it would be in a 2005 KN. I thought it might be when I end up buying something a little bit newer, but no. And as I mentioned, it works seamlessly and paired with the Bose sound system, it's just fantastic. I mean, they don't make cars like this anymore. This thing was made 18 years ago and the design is more than 20 years old. The sound system is, is on par, if not better than some of the new cars I get to drive. It's really, really fantastic. 
everything just feels so well put together as well. I can't stress that enough with, with these. With something like an L322, yes, they feel tactile and solid and like you can go anywhere, but you've always just got this little feeling that something's gonna snap off in your hand where the KN, especially with these big chunky grab bars here, feels very, very solid, both cosmetically and in feel, but also mechanically too. Now we will see about that because I am booked in to go and see the guys at ePorsche like I did back in the day with my Boxster to do a full inspection on this thing, give it a service and just the once over. So I'll be very intrigued to see what condition this thing is actually in. But I can happily report from the two or 300 miles that I've done in this thing so far, it's been perfect actually. There's just a couple of things that are slightly broken. Actually the handbrake uh, Christian mentioned before I bought the car, not to use it or that if I did use it, it's a little bit sticky. So I've not been using the handbrake. I just put the car in park. The rear windscreen wiper is cable tied. And when I do try to use it, it doesn't really do its job. I think the front wipers need replacing too. And also the Tiptronic box, it works absolutely fine. But if I put it into manual by selecting a gear or doing this, it doesn't stay in manual. It comes back into automatic. Am I bothered about that? No, but again, it's something we can get the guys at ePorsche to look at for sure. My only complaint with this car so far is in the ride quality. It's not as soft and plush as I might have liked or expected. I don't particularly remember it being an issue in the S that I drove before. In fact, I've driven a few S's, but I'm pretty sure at least one of them had air suspension. And from what I've read online in the past few days, because I've thought it was a bit of an issue, lots and lots and lots of non-S or non-air suspension KN owners of this 955 generation do report that the ride is just hard. And obviously me being on the largest factory wheels, which were the 20 inch wheels, which I have, isn't going to help that. So as the ride quality goes with KN, my non-air suspension 20 inch V6 car is probably as bad as it gets. On a smooth road like this, which you have to remember in Germany, most of them are, it's lovely and it's clearly what it was designed for. But when you get onto a bumpy road or you do run over some cat's eyes, it's a very unforgiving uh, suspension, very, very firm. Again, when we take this for an inspection, we'll find out potentially if it's something to do with this car specifically. It's not unbearable, but it is firmer than you'd like in a comfortable cruiser, let's say. But then having said that, on a road like this, which is nice, it rides pretty nice. But you can just see I am a little bit bumpy all over the place, and I think uh, maybe there's something that needs to be done with, with the suspension on this car. But from what I've read, it's nothing to be worried about because lots of KN owners say the same thing. So to be totally frank with you, I could talk for another hour about this car and just show you it. I really want to show you it because I just think it's brilliant. Oh, do you want to know what I paid for this thing, by the way? Have a guess now before I tell you. Comment below and let me know if you're right. I paid, I think, about bang average for it, £3,800. It's got 122,000 miles on the clock. It has really been looked after, this thing. Lots of stamps, some good receipts, but you can just tell it's been looked after. And the last owner was definitely an enthusiast because he did lots of stuff himself, which is a good and bad thing. But also within that money that I paid for the car, Christian did deliver it to me, which was a big, big help because uh, he's all the way over in Essex. So it saved me an extra journey to go and pick it up. So thanks to Christian for that. And thank you for just supplying me with this car because like I say, so far, so, so good. Yeah, I'm in love with this thing, absolutely obsessed. Do you think uh, I made the right decision buying this? And also, what do you want to see me do with it? I've got some big things planned, depending on what ePorsche say, I suppose. Let's see if it all checks out first, and then we can start with some adventures, finally. But you know what? I have to admit to you guys, I've not been this excited for a car in a long time. Yes, I love my XC90. Yes, I love the Audi TT. But mainly, I just loved the novelty of the fact that that TT costs so little. Whereas now I feel like I've kind of treated myself to something that I really wanted. And I've always wanted a KN and I wish I'd done it earlier. This thing is fantastic. Would I have it over an L322 Range Rover? Well, we'll have to give it a little bit longer before I make any statements like that. But yeah, I am obsessed with this thing and I can't wait for more content to come out with it. So thank you all so much for watching this video. 
I'll see you all in the next one very, very soon.